Hey guys, my name is Grant Hurst, and you are watching Historian Essentials, the show where I explain concepts and ideas that all history majors should be familiar with. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at historiography. So what exactly is historiography? Well, as we can see from the word itself, it is a compound of the English word history, which we covered in this video, and the suffix ography, coming from the Greek word graphia, meaning field of study. So historiography can be defined as the study of history. If we expand this definition to include the definition of history, it can read the study of knowledge from inquiry. So basically, historiography is the study of how we have looked at the past, or the history of history. Every work of history is considered to be part of the historiography. However, historians don't usually lump all histories together. So when talking about historiography, we usually divide them up by subject matter. For example, all of the books at your local bookstore about the American Revolution are all part of the historiography of the American Revolution. The purpose of historiography is to look at how other people have written about and therefore interpreted a particular subject. Different groups have been grouped together into what is referred to as schools of historiography. And these works usually have some element that unites them together. Sometimes these elements are political biases, and other times they are cross-disciplinary lenses such as women's studies or economics. Let's take the American Revolution for example. If what you're writing or the book you're reading portrays the American colonists as freedom-loving patriots fighting against British tyranny, then your work or that book are probably fall somewhere within what is referred to as the Whig school of history. However, if you portray the American Revolution as colonial elites scapegoating the mother country in order to distract people from domestic economic problems, then you are probably a Marxist or reading a Marxist work. And if you're someone who thinks of the American colonists as ungrateful sods who don't want to pay for their fair share for the defense of the empire, then you're probably from the imperialist school. Now, not all subjects of history have the exact same schools of historiography. In fact, the more niche you get, the more unique forms of historiography you find. But the more general you get, then the more common historiographical schools you're going to see. When writing or studying history, it's important to read the historiography of the subject you are looking at. Just like when history is being applied to other disciplines, historiography gives you the intellectual context of what you're reading. What issues is this author addressing in their book? And what criticisms are they addressing? You shouldn't just familiarize yourself with the historiography you agree with, but also with those you disagree with. It's important because other schools of thought bring up questions that your particular school of thought might not bring up. And if for no other reason then you need to make sure that you are able to defend your own ideas. And in order to do that, you need to look at the other historiographical schools that contradict yours. So what other terms, concepts, or ideas that you think every history major should be familiar with? Let me know down in the comments below. I would like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. Thanks to your support, I can continue to make videos for people to learn from and be entertained. If you're interested in becoming a supporter of this channel, then you can go to patreon.com slash casual historian, where you can get perks such as getting to see videos early, getting your name in the end credits of videos, as well as getting to a sneak peek of what videos I have coming down in the pipeline. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.